Hi everyone, in this video I turn this into this. That's right folks, in this video I'll guide you through the process of me wiring up my small DC layout. Things I'll specifically focus on in this video is making the control panel, next toggle switches to give the siding and loop separately power to allow multiple trains on the track at once. Then a panel mount plug to make it very easy to set the layout up and all the other wiring details and a lot more coming up. So let's get started. For the control panel I want to make this. The controller will then be mounted on it as well as all the switches for the rails and other things I'd like to add in the future. It will be made using 7mm plywood and some pieces of timber for extra strength. Now I'm not very good with woodwork but I'll try my best. So I start by transferring my plans onto the plywood. For this I use a ruler and a vernier protractor to be as accurate as possible. And whoops, I accidentally made the top the same size as the front panel. Luckily I realized it before cutting the wood and it was easily fixed. I double check everything from time to time to prevent big discouragement later. Then I continue marking the timbers. This is some of the same wood as I used for the support braces on the main base of the layout. Once done, I clamp the plywood to my table to prevent it from moving whilst cutting. To make the cuts, I use a hand saw. A circular saw will give you better results, but a hand saw also works fine as long as you take your time to cut accurately and do some sanding afterward. For sanding, I use 80 grit sandpaper. Once done, I test fit to make sure everything is the right size and fits perfectly. Then the support pieces are also cut out and sanded. So these are the corner pieces and these are the top, side and front boards. For assembling it I'll be using a drill, wood screws, a 2mm drill bit, a Phillips screwdriver bit and finally some wood glue. Assembling it is very straightforward. I first drill two holes. Then apply some wood glue and screw it in place. The rest I'll show you in a quick time lapse. I don't glue the top on because it'll be nice to be able to remove it in the future to work on it. I also only screw the control panel onto the base without using glue for the same reason. Next I did some more sanding to tidy up the edges. Once done, I mark the side for the controller using a normal pen. I also mark an area where I can add switches for all kinds of things I want to add in the future. Above that, I will mark the rails. 
I first use a normal pen and as I'm sure that's how I want it, I use a permanent marker. So I'm now done constructing the control panel so I can start with the wiring. But first, yes a few things I'll be using. First a panel mount AC power inlet. This is the same connector that's on most computer power supplies. You'll also need a cable like this. Then for the main switch to turn the power on and off I have this switch. Also the same as on most computer power supplies. Next some normal on off toggle switches. Terminal strips. A toggle switch box, but I'll use it to do the 220 volt connections inside. Next I'll need some cable, this is 1mm ripcord. And finally a 220 volt AC to 12 volt DC transformer. It's a good idea to install the transformer and things like this before starting with the scenery. I start by mounting the controller using small track bands. Once done, I mark the position where I want to drill the holes for the rail switches. This switches is to physically turn the power on and off for certain areas of the track to allow multiple trains on the track at once, even though this is a normal DC layout. In this case, I have a switch for the siding and another switch for the main loop of the layout. To cut the hole for the power inlet, I first mark the center of the front board. Then I use the cable and trace around it like this. After drilling I use a coping saw to get the final shape of the power inlet. Once done, I flip the layout upside down to drill the holes for the cables to go down through the layout. For this, I use a 10mm wood drill bit. I drill two holes, one for the 220V AC and another for all the DC cables. For cable management under the layout, I drill holes through the cross bracings like this. But the holes can't be too large, otherwise it will affect the strength of the timbers. And while I'm at it, I also drill the holes in the box I'll be using to do the connections inside. Then I screw the box to the plywood using very small screws and also the power transformer. Once done, it's time to do the wiring. First thing to do is to remove the plugs of the train controller and the transformer. If they don't screw off easily, you can simply cut them off like this. Next, you'll need to strip the wire. This is a bit tricky because you don't want to cut into the wires inside. Just take your time and do your best. I strip about 8mm of the isolation from the wire then twist and fold it over like this. Then I connect it to the terminal strap. For the power in, I use the 1mm rub cord. Once you're done with all the connections, tug at all the wires to make sure they are all nice and securely connected. Then some more cable management and I also put on the lid of the box. Here I also connect the feeder wires into a terminal strip. A tip I got from Charlie from the YouTube channel Chadwick Model Railway is to wire up the rail so that a black to the back. So these are all the back, all the rear wires, and the rear tracks as it were, and the reds are all the front. Very smart. So that's what I did as well. 
To keep all the cables nice and tidy, I installed this cable trunking. Then I flip the layout over to finish the wiring on the top side. And I also get my soldering tools ready. Before I solder the wires to the power inlet, I first make the hole for the main power switch. This is done by marking where I want it. And then drilling. Filing and then cutting with a knife till it fits. Now I pull the rub cord through the hole of the power inlet and cut off the excess wire. Then I split the rub cord and one wire goes back to the power switch like this. Then I cut an extra piece of wire to go back from the switch to the power plug. Next I strip the ends of the wire and also cut some pieces of each ring. Then I pre-solder the wires. Slide over the heat shrink and solder the wires to the power inlet and switch. Quick tip! When soldering the wires to the power inlet, plug the cable into it. That way the pins of the power inlet can't move when the heat from the soldering iron causes the plastic to soften and melt a bit. Once done, slide over the heat shrink and use any heat source to shrink it. And the same process is repeated for the main switch. And that's all the wiring done for the 220 volt AC. Now I'll start with the wiring from the train controller to the switches to the tracks. So first, an easy way to keep the switches steady while soldering is to place them upside down in the holes like this. The type of wire you use isn't really important, anything similar to this would work fine. I cut some pieces of wire, about 80 cm each, and strip the ends for soldering. Then I pre-solder the pins of the switches and solder a red wire to each of the side pins and a black wire gets soldered to both of the metal pins of the switches like this. The rest of the wiring is very straightforward. The black wire that goes to the switches is soldered to the controller. And a red wire gets also soldered to the controller. So now I have three wires that goes down through the layout for the tracks. The one that comes directly from the controller is cut to length and connected to both of the red feeder wires. One from the siding and the other from the main loop. The siding and the loop are not connected, 
So I'm able to give each its own power separately, which I can turn on and off with the toggle switches. Once done, I just do some more cable management. And we're almost done. Just have to put on the nuts of the toggle switches, double check all the connections and that's the wiring done. So all that's needed is to plug it in, turn on the switch and you are ready to start driving trains. Testing the switches shows that they work great. But before I destroy my trains, I install this. If you missed the previous videos in which I made the bench work, laid the track and soldered the feeder wires and a lot more, then definitely go watch them if you are interested. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video till the end, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video, bye.